I will long remember an incident that happened shortly after I arrived in Tucson, Arizona to begin my tenure track position at the University of Arizona. It was September 1989. I was done working for the day and I was walking a few blocks to a surface parking lot. I was about to cross the street half a block from my car when I saw two young men in a car headed my way. They were driving parallel to me in the opposite direction. I took a step into the sidewalk. Then I made eye contact with the driver of the car. He was driving past me until we made eye contact. At that point, he swerved toward me. I jumped back out of the way. He narrowly avoided hitting me and instead hit the nearby stop sign. He then backed up and sped away. I suspect he was drunk. Regardless, speeding away was a bad idea. Directly behind me was the University of Arizona Police Department. Like me, they were finishing work for the day. There were several university police officers in their parking lot. They witnessed the near collision of the car with me. Always eagerly anticipating excitement, two police cars chased a probably drunk driver. They cut the driver when his car veered off the road and smashed into a hedge less than two blocks away. Two officers stayed behind to ask me questions. This is where it gets interesting. Back in those days, everybody knew their social security number. It was part of your identification before we became so concerned with identity theft that we dared not share this bit of information. Like everybody I knew, I could recite my social security number at any time, any place. It was nearly as much a part of my identity as my name and address. One of the officers quizzed me while the other one recorded notes. After my name, occupation, and address came the obvious question, what's your social security number? I had no idea. I tried guessing a couple of times, but my guesses were incorrect. I was clearly in shock. This bit of information was not critical to the case. The police officers could probably find it quite easily. In any event, they told me they might be in touch if they needed a witness. They were done with me, at least for now. I never heard anything else about this case. Fast forward to a few weeks ago in downtown Bellows Falls, Vermont, not far from where I currently live. A man was crossing the street in the sidewalk. He was hit by an 18-wheeler. He died a few days later after suffering in a coma. His husband was in the car waiting for him. The husband had no idea what was happening until he was surrounded by fire trucks and police cars. I'm reminded of a couple of quotes from the Stoics. From Seneca, often said to be the founder of modern Stoicism, quote, the whole future lies in uncertainty live immediately." End quote. And from Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius in his Meditations, quote, never forget that it takes very little to live a fulfilled and happy life. End quote. From CNN Business News comes this headline on January 10th, 2024. The people paid to spot risks see high chance of global catastrophe within 10 years. Here's the lead. Quote, humanity faces a perilous future marked by an explosion of disinformation turbocharged by artificial intelligence and the devastating effects of climate change, End quote. The next two paragraphs read, quote, the global outlook comes from an annual survey by the World Economic Forum of people paid to identify and manage global risks. According to the report published Wednesday, that was January 10th, 2024, Nearly two-thirds of respondents expected an elevated chance of global catastrophes in the next decade. About 30% expected the same in the next two years." End quote. In a statement, the World Economic Forum said its latest report, quote, warns of a global risks landscape in which progress in human development is being chipped away slowly, leaving states and individuals vulnerable to new and resurgent risks. End quote. I take issue only, only with the idea that, quote, progress in human development is being chipped away slowly, end quote. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, in its October 8, 2018 report, Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees, quote, these global level rates of human-driven change far exceed the rates of change driven by geophysical or biosphere forces that have altered the Earth system trajectory in the past and they cite a couple of examples from the peer-reviewed peer literature. 
Even abrupt geophysical events do not approach current rates of human-driven change, end quote. In other words, current rates of human-driven change exceed those that followed an asteroid striking the planet about 66 million years ago, thereby driving dinosaurs and many other species to extinction. The collective impact of humans on climate change, quote, far exceed, end quote, this and other geophysical events. For the first time in the survey's near 20-year history, experts identified misinformation and disinformation as the most severe risk in the next two years. Among the concerns expressed in the CNN article was spreading false information to influence voters. This could lead to questions about the legitimacy of governments throughout the world. Color me shocked. Extreme weather events were ranked second as a short-term risk. Last year was the hottest on record, which has raised awareness about climate change. Rising temperatures, rampant floods, and numerous wildfires are among the outcomes attracting the attention of the masses. Finally, for the third consecutive year, environmental concerns dominated over a 10-year horizon. Finally, the masses are beginning to understand the importance of environmental protection and its connection to extreme weather events, biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse, and shortages of materials provided by ecosystems. I strongly suspect the concern of the masses falls squarely into the categories of too little and too late. Speaking of cliches, is this a case of better late than never, or is it instead a case of why bother? Either way, I believe it's better to be informed than not.